Today, we are diving into tuning for nitrous. Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Garage, and as always, we start off these videos by thanking all the new subscribers, all the existing subscribers, everybody who takes the time to throw that thumbs up down there. That's what helps to get this content out to other people, and of course, everybody that takes the time to comment. There's been some issue with YouTube comments lately. I'm working on getting those sorted out for some reason. Just standard comments were getting filtered. I'm going through approving all those and basically, you know, we're getting it sorted out. But that being said, we also need to thank our sponsors for this series, Nitrous Express, who has been helping us out every step of the way on Project Country Club to get this thing running on nitrous. Me and the uh, father-in-law took it out the other day, put about 75 shot worth it towards it using the progressive setup. Man, it is fun. We came straight back, put the 150 jet in. We haven't gotten it back out yet because the roads have been kind of crappy since then. But that leads us to today's topic, which is talking about tuning for nitrous. And we're gonna to touch on kind of the, the basics because there's a lot of basics that cross over from wet and dry. And then at the end of this, we will focus on kind of doing dry on the Terminator because on a dry system, you don't have the additional fuel solenoid that helps to keep everything uh, running safely. So there's a couple extra steps on the dry side that we have to take. But before we dive into that, let's go ahead, get the disclaimer out of the way because we are gonna be talking about tuning today. This video is intended for educational purposes only. Improper tuning can cause catastrophic mechanical damage and you should do your own research before attempting any changes like this to a vehicle. Attempt custom tuning at your own risk. Okay, now that that's done, let's see through the magic of uh, cinematography if I can't get a black box over here and maybe we can start listing down some bullet points that comes with tuning on nitrous. So one of the first things that you probably already heard about is running a colder plug. And in fact, in most situations, you wanna run at least two steps colder. And then the larger shot of nitrous that you're gonna run on top of that will determine if you need to go uh, colder beyond that point. So if you are a heat range five on an NGK, you're probably going to be looking at stepping out to a seven. That's generally what you see on the LS platform, but double check for your own platform. So check your plugs, make sure that they're cold enough. And the reason behind that is that heat range determines how quick heat is dissipated from the spark plug. And I've talked about this in the past whenever we did plugs on the Super Auto, uh, and that will also help prevent detonation. So if you're running a plug that's too hot and the dynamics of the engine change, you can get into detonation because of the retained heat in those plugs. That's why we go to a colder plug. The second one, Fueling, okay, now if you're running a wet setup, you have a specific jet that you're supposed to run alongside with your nitrous jet to get you in the ballpark of fueling. That doesn't mean to say that it is gonna be spot on. There might have to be some adjustment one way or the other. Generally on a nitrous setup, we don't go as rich as we do on uh, forced induction. We're not cramming air in per se, we are generating more oxygen thanks to the fact that nitrous oxide has about 30% more oxygen per volume than atmospheric air. That's where we get all the power and that's why we have to add the additional fuel because effectively we're not cramming more air in there, we're cramming more oxygen displacing atmospheric air and that oxygen that's in there has more by volume. So that being said, uh, we need to pay attention to our air to fuel ratios. On top of it, you need to have your vehicle tuned properly before you start the nitrous tuning. Keep that in mind. If you are running rich or lean before you add nitrous and go start tuning on nitrous and logging on nitrous, you are going to exacerbate the issue and possibly cause issues. So please do yourself a favor, get your tune lined out beforehand, make sure that your power enrichment is working properly, and then whenever you add a wet kit, that nozzle should enrich enough to keep you about where you were at beforehand. So we are targeting 12.7 on the Project Country Club. They say to keep it richer than 13, but no richer than uh, 12 and a half. If you have heard any different, go ahead and post down in the comments below. Now on a dry setup, it's a little bit different because we are using a standalone setup to provide the fueling bump on it, but there's a rule of thumb that works really well, well there, and that is 
For every 100 shot of nitrous, you want 30 pounds per hour of fuel flow. And we will dive into that in a bit and look at how that works on the Terminator because we have a progressive setup. How can we adjust the fuel flow? Pretty cool. So next we need to talk about timing. Timing is a big one and it's the same idea behind kind of the spark plugs, things like that. You're changing the dynamics of the way the engine burns that air to fuel ratio and it burns at a different rate because of the nitrous oxide in there. And so for every 50 shot of horsepower nitrous, you want to pull two degrees of timing. Easy enough on a standalone system, but on the factory ECU, there's a couple different ways to do it. One of them is to go into the wide open throttle and pull the timing out of that area of the table uh, because if you're going to be spraying to make power in that area of the table, you can go ahead and subtract that out. You're not going to be as powerful off of the nitrous in that area, but you'll be safe whenever you're on the nitrous. The other, which is a cool idea that somebody brought up to me in one of the live chats, Thursday 8 Eastern, check them out, uh, is to use a relay as a part of your nitrous circuit that whenever you are enabling your nitrous, it opens up the signal from your IAT sensor that will default that down to the negative 40 degree range in there, and then you can set up a nitrous timing uh, uh, area just off of that negative 40 that should correspond with your nitrous injection and your wide open throttle. So do some research on that. I'm probably not gonna to touch on that, but there is some information out there on how to do that, and it's a great idea in making sure that you have a safe nitrous timing curve in there, because this is, you do want to make sure and dial that back. Now, people have said it's perfectly fine to run out to 100 without adjusting the timing, but better safe than sorry. If you do everything safe on this kind of setup, you will be safe and you're not going to hurt your engine. Now that we've talked about the big three, air, spark, fuel, and the, the requirements to create this additional power through combustion, let's talk about the different things such as progressive and stage nitrous control. You've heard a lot of stuff out there. I've seen some questions on some of the comments. What are progressive and stage? Well, progressive is using a solid state relay that will actually go in and pulse your nitrous solenoid to deliver smaller amounts. So the way that we have it set up right now, we've got a 150 jet in there. I know at 100% duty cycle, that jet is flowing 150 shot of nitrous. Anything below that duty cycle, we can basically interpolate out and find a percentage. So at 50, we are actually at a 75 shot. We've got some uh, additional fueling curve stuff that we can do on that that helps to keep all of that straightened away. We'll check that out. Now stage is more of the style of where you have a relay injecting through a jet. So you're going to get the full boost or the full nitrous hit off of the stage, but you have multiple stages. So if you have traction issues down low, you can have maybe a 50 or 100 horsepower shot on that. And then you can bring in another horsepower shot of 100 to have a combined 200 and there are multiple controllers out there that support multiple stages that you can run off of gear rpm load etc so check out the maximizer 5 uh, there will be links to things like that down below okay we've got my tune pulled up right now and if we scroll down through here we can get an idea of what we're running this is going to be the 150 shot uh, jet on the dry setup. So let's start at the top and we'll talk about some of the features that you can look for that are pretty standard. I've looked at a lot of different standalone systems that allow you to do uh, dry progressive stuff. And the big one is, is you do have the option to check whether or not you're running dry and uh, are wet and progressive or non-progressive. So this software will cover about everything as will most standalone ECUs. We are on a dry progressive and we could do non-progressive and just hit that uh, solenoid full open, and but in order to try and protect the drivetrain a little bit, we ramp into it. So the next big stuff that we have down here is our activation, deactivation stuff. This is in place of your standard wide open throttle switch that you might mount to the throttle body or your pedal. And so we've got it at 90%. The TPS signal has to be above 90% in order to allow triggering the nitrous. On top of it, we have to be at least at 2,500 RPMs, and then we shut off at 6,000 before we get to our shift point on this. We might play along with that uh, later on down the road. Right now, we do not have a trans signal coming back to the ECM to give it an indication when it's shifting, and so we are doing full power shifts through, full power shift with a nitrous shot on top of it. Not the best idea, but I'm working on a way of getting a signal back that allows to pull a couple degrees of timing during shift, back the power off a little bit, and then allow it to stay in through the shift. Stage activation delay, that's just if you're wanting to dial in on things like for uh, bracket racing, you can actually activate stage delays to help get your timing set up. 
And up top, we did skip over the dry fuel delay and the dry fuel ramp. The dry fuel delay in this uh, situation is saying that I want the fuel to start kicking in 100 milliseconds before I allow the nitrous solenoid to start injecting nitrous. That's a good baseline to start from. And then the dry fuel ramp is kind of the zero to 100% ramp rate in that period of time. And so we've got those equal right now saying at the end of 100 milliseconds, we should be injecting 100% 100 of the fuel that we're looking to inject. Now we have the lean and rich cutoff. This is what's really nice about having a standalone. Since we're using a wide band all the time and it is using that for live tuning as I've touched on on some of my previous videos, we can set cutoff limits on here to say if we go more than 13.7 AFR lean that it will cut the nitrous off. We don't have to worry about getting into the danger zone. That alone has been worth the cost of entry in my mind because it gives you a little bit of peace of mind. Now, there are some other people that have done devices that allow you to do similar things as an add-on uh, that will output a signal that you can use to help cut timing, things like that. So once again, do your research on that. Pedaling strategy is basically whether or not you want to be able to back off the pedal if you're starting to get into wheel slip. And we've got it enabled basically. It will pause it while we back off and as we get back in, it will continue the ramp. We can do none, which will just keep the, uh, the thing where it requires a uh, going back below our initial set points. So we'd have to dip below 2,500 in this one. Or you could have a programmable restart, which would allow us to hit a button and go ahead and restart our nitrous stage there. Now we get into the tuning aspects of it. Timing retard is the big one here. We have a hold after deactivation. So once we reach the end of it and it shuts the solenoid, I've got it set to hold timing off for an additional second back there. Just make sure everything is cleared out of the system. And then we can do it a couple of ways. We can do fixed timing where it just is gonna fix timing across the whole curve. And that's really good if you're not using progressive, but since we're using progressive, we're opting on a RPM based timing curve. And you can see that we say at 3,500, and in fact, that should be 2,500 because now we're injecting at 2,500. And so we will fill this in. Fill row values. From 2,500, we start pulling two degrees of timing. And then once we cross over 4,300, we pull three degrees all the way out to six degrees on a full shot on this. So this allows us to adjust that rate per our progressive set out. After that, we have the closed loop settings. This is where we say that we want to target 12.7. It will adjust just like closed loop operations at part throttle. But since we have the wideband, it will adjust uh, our fueling to make sure we are hitting our 12.7. And so far as we've gone up to a 75 shot, this thing has been spot on. It's worked amazingly. Now comes the big one, the progressive control. You can see that we have this set up as RPM based. We're going from 2,500, even though we're going up to 6,500, we've got it set up to shut off at 6,000 through our enable controls but we are going up to 50% duty cycle. That means on a 150 shot jet, we should be getting around a 75 shot of nitrous on there. And you can see that we're starting at 25% of that 150 shot jet and ramping up from there. And it makes it feel more like a turbo where it, whenever it starts to come on, you feel it come on and then it really starts to push you back in the chair and go. Well, we can come in here and whenever we want to, you can be literally on the fly for the most part, you need to pull over or have somebody else do it. But while somebody else was driving the car the other day, I was adjusting the progressive control and we went from 50% on a hundred shot to 75% on a hundred shot without ever having to stop. Frequency is just going to determine the duty cycle frequency within the period. The, it comes as a default at 10 hertz. It works here, so we're not adjusting that. I've talked about period and duty cycles within period in the past. Uh, basically, it is going to be how often it pulses. And at 10 hertz, we're pulsing so fast that we're uh, basically keeping the solenoid moving at all times. Now, if you run too fast on, a, on your hertz side, you can get into the issue where the solenoid just stays open because it can't react fast enough. So you might need to check with the manufacturer of your solenoid to see how fast that you can actuate your solenoid for progressive control. And then last but not least on this specific setup, we have the added fuel enrichment. And this makes it super easy because if you can see at the bottom, we have the duty cycle and then the top row is in pounds per hour. We know that 100 and 
100% duty cycle in this case is a 150 shot as I talked about earlier. The rule of thumb for a dry system is to add 30 pounds per hour per 100 shot. Since we're going out to a 150, we go up to 45 then we ramp down from zero. And if you were to come in here at 75%, you would see uh, we are actually are a little bit richer than 30 because of the curve, but it gets you in about the right idea or the right area of what you need to have on that fuel curve. And then we let the fuel system learn out the rest. Straightforward, uh, very simple. At the end of it, we disable it here. This is a trigger that we use through IO. If you come in through the inputs and outputs, we have the N2O to enable. And in this case, you can see I've got it mapped back through our Holly 7 inch display. I hit the button, it's ready to go. All you have to do is mash the gas, rock and roll. That's really it. And I know what you're saying to yourself, Kyle, it's gotta be more complicated than that, but I assure you it's not. One of the big things that I touched on is making sure that your vehicle is properly tuned before starting this process. Everything around nitrous oxide is under the assumption that you already have an operating vehicle that functions properly, has been tuned properly, and does not have any issues on the tune. If you are experiencing issues on the tune and you add nitrous oxide to it, you are uh, having a recipe for disaster. So get your air fuels dialed in, get your spark figured out, get all that stuff, and then you add the nitrous oxide on it. And if you're doing a wet kit, pretty straightforward. Keep an eye on those AFRs. Make sure that the jet combination works for your setup. They should. There's been a lot of research into uh, getting these jets sorted out. This is how much nitrous, this is how much fuel. So trust the experts on this one. If you've got questions, reach out to the experts, ask them. On the dry stuff, well, we only touched on standalone stuff. There are guys that are running dry uh, systems on non-standalone. I'm not gonna talk about that because that's outside the realm of my experience and expertise, but there is some stuff that they're doing by spraying through the map, using uh, temperature differentials, things like that to get the enrichment that they need. I don't know that it is necessarily the uh, safest way of doing nitrous injection. So. With the prices on kits nowadays though, there's no reason not to do a wet install if you don't have the additional fueling control that a standalone brings. Uh, because honestly, they're, they're only about 100 bucks more for the wet setup. Check them out, Nitrous Express has everything that you need. Thanks again to those guys for helping to support us, make Project Country Club a little bit more awesome. And there will be some videos out very soon of us going out doing some uh, pulls with the Draggy to see how much improvement that we're getting off of uh, doing the nitrous injection. On top of it, we will be installing the uh, automatic bottle heater. We will be wiring in the remote pressure gauge to bring the pressure from the bottle back to the Holly display. And I've got a big, big bottle of nitrous over there. So we need to do a video on how to fill your own bottles at home. I'll go into the details of how to get your own mother bottle, uh, some of the different fittings that you're gonna need, et cetera. So I wanna thank everybody as always for stopping by, watching this video, supporting the channel, hitting that thumbs up button, subscribing, catching out the live show on Thursday, eight Eastern. It's been a great couple live shows, been giving away a lot of free stuff on there. So make sure and check it out if you want a chance to win some merch, shirts, uh, you know, I gave away a gauge last week, things like that. So as always, make sure to support those that support the garage. All the links are down in the uh, details below. Check out the Patreon if you need tuning assistance. That's the best way to get it. You know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the garage. ABT, always be tuning.